Greetings, seekers of knowledge, enthusiasts of inquiry, and champions of self-awareness. As I, Socrates, ponder upon the pages of my life, I find myself compelled to share the journey that has shaped my existence. Born in Athens, Greece, in the year 470 BCE, my early years were marked by a thirst for knowledge and a relentless pursuit of truth. From a young age, I was drawn to philosophy, questioning the norms and conventions of society in search of deeper understanding. My encounters with esteemed thinkers, such as Anaxagoras and Parmenides, ignited a flame within me, propelling me towards a life devoted to philosophical inquiry. My method of questioning, known as the Socratic method, became synonymous with my teachings. By engaging in dialogue with my fellow citizens, I sought to provoke critical thinking and self-reflection, challenging the assumptions that underpinned their beliefs and actions. I'm quite sure you heard Socratic method. Really, what is that? Ah, my friend, let me elucidate upon the Socratic method, a cornerstone of my philosophical inquiry. Picture this a bustling agora in ancient Athens, where citizens engage in spirited debate and discourse. Now, imagine I encounter a fellow Athenian and pose a question, perhaps something like, what is justice? Instead of offering a definitive answer, I embark on a journey of inquiry, guiding my interlocutor through a series of probing questions. I might ask, can justice truly be defined? Or, how do we recognize justice when we see it? Through this process of questioning and dialogue, I aim not to provide answers, but to stimulate critical thinking and self-discovery. By challenging assumptions and encouraging introspection, the Socratic method fosters intellectual growth and encourages individuals to arrive at their own conclusions. Thus, in the pursuit of truth, the journey of inquiry is as important as the destination. Yet my unyielding commitment to truth and virtue would ultimately lead to my downfall. In 399 BCE, I stood trial on charges of impiety and corrupting the youth of Athens, accusations fueled by the enmity of those threatened by my teachings. Here my famous defense, my esteemed fellow citizens of Athens, as I stand before you today, accused of impiety and corrupting the youth, I am compelled to defend myself with the utmost sincerity and candor. Let it be known that my only aim has been to pursue truth and virtue, to provoke critical thinking and self-reflection among my fellow Athenians. First and foremost, I must address the charge of impiety. It is true that I have questioned the traditional beliefs and practices of our city-state, but I assure you, my intention was not to undermine the gods or disrespect our sacred traditions. Rather, it was to encourage deeper reflection upon the nature of piety and righteousness, to ensure that our devotion to the divine is rooted in genuine understanding and conviction. As for the accusation of corrupting the youth, I maintain that my interactions with the young people of Athens have been nothing but beneficial. Through the Socratic method, I have sought to instill in them a love of wisdom and a commitment to moral excellence. Far from leading them astray, I have endeavored to guide them toward lives of integrity and virtue. I ask you, my fellow citizens, to consider my actions and teachings with fairness and impartiality. Is it not better to engage in reasoned dialogue and debate, to question assumptions and seek truth, than to blindly accept the dictates of tradition and authority. I implore you to recognize that my philosophical inquiry is driven by a genuine desire to improve our society and uphold the values that define us as Athenians. In closing, I appeal to your sense of justice and wisdom. Do not let fear or prejudice cloud your judgment. Instead, let reason and fairness prevail and let us continue our pursuit of truth and enlightenment together as citizens of this great city-state of Athens. Despite my impassioned defence, the jury found me guilty, and I was sentenced to death by drinking hemlock. In my final moments, surrounded by friends and disciples, 
I remained steadfast in my convictions, embracing my fate with dignity and grace. Though my physical form may have perished, my legacy endures through the writings of my devoted disciple Plato, whose dialogues immortalize our philosophical exchanges. And so, as I reflect upon the tapestry of my life, I am filled with gratitude for the opportunity to have pursued truth and wisdom, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire seekers of knowledge across the ages.